Hello Quilt Artisans, my name is Shonda and welcome to my channel Under the Needle. So um, I'm working on a project and I want to show it to you guys, right? So in the op so I get the Open Gate subscription quilt box, the Open Gate, open gate subscription box. And we get a big project and a small project every month. And this, this, uh, this month's larger project was a table runner. Now, you guys may not know this, but I've been doing some redecorating to the house. I've been painting, which is new for me because I grew up in an apartment in New York City. Well, not New York City, New York State, about an hour north of Manhattan in this little city called White Plains in Westchester County. That's where I grew up and I lived in an apartment. And if you grew up in an apartment, you cannot paint your walls. At least you couldn't when I was growing up. We were not allowed to paint because it was like rent controlled and like you weren't allowed to paint. You could paint white, but you weren't allowed to put color on your wall. So I grew up without color on the wall and it never really occurred to me. So and all the time, you know, living in North Carolina, you know, I could have painted. You just have to paint it back when you're done. So you can paint the walls in North Carolina, but when you're done, you got to paint them back white. I could have done that. But it just never, it just never occurred to me. And I'm just not a super decorate -y person. I'm a rather plain person. So we've got, you know, been doing all this painting and I'm, and we've got to do some new furniture and everything's starting to look, come together and look good. And um, there was a wall hanging that I made from last month's box that I was, that I'm using as a table topper. But the table's kind of long and I wanted um, a table runner. So when we got the project last, um, this month for a table runner, this little puppy right here, I was like, this is cute. I love these little pinwheels. Um, love the pattern, but I did not want to make it in the fabric that we got for the pattern because I wanted to make it match my home, specifically my kitchen. So I decided I was going to take the pattern, go into my stash, and make it from my stash. And that's what I did. Um, so it's not quite finished because I still have to quilt and bind it. Um, but I'm not going to get to do that today. Uh, normally, I just would have finished it today because I can have this quilted and bound probably in an hour and a half since it's a table runner, maybe two hours tops. And so normally I would just do that, but I have to leave today. I have to go, I have, I have things to do. So I'm not going to get to finish it, but I'm so excited about how it looks that I just had to show you guys. So this is my table runner. Let's see here. It just, it's just very beachy. It gives beach vibes, and that's kind of what... Um, the furniture and the like the colors in the house it's it, it gives beach vibes and so does this I love how the little pinwheels pop um, I just took 10 fat quarters from my stash and of course I pieced the back with leftover fat quarters I think I've got four four fat quarters here but um yeah so like I said it still has to be quilted and bound but I just love the vibe of it. I just love how it came, to go, came together. I really didn't put a lot of rhyme and reason into it. Um, the main part was um, the, the cutting, right? Because this, was, this pattern was designed to go with a charm pack. And I wasn't using a charm pack. So um, I had to make sure that I cut the right amount of square. So it, there was a little math involved. I had to do a little conversion math to make it work specifically with 10 fat quarters. And then I made the decision, just because I'm super symmetrical for some reason, that I wanted the four corners to have the same print in it. So that's this corner, and then here, and then down here at the bottom. I, I don't know why I made that design choice. Um, I did not make it right away. Um, because I had to like take some stitches out and do some extra cutting because I kind of decided at the end, well not at the end, I kind of decided after I did all, all my cutting and I was starting to piece, I decided then that that's what I wanted to do. That I wanted to have those four in the same, in the same corner. And then I had, when I was like trying to figure out my border option, 
I just cut two inches, but I only cut two inches because that's that was the biggest I could cut it with the fabric that I have with the fabric that I had left over from the stack quarter. So um, I kind of calculated um, like because I didn't know I didn't I didn't want to find a new fat quarter for the border, right? Because I kind of liked how all of these vibed and I did not want to get a new fat quarter um, for for the for the or, or pull yardage from my stash for the border. I did not want to do that. I really just wanted to um, I have no idea what this camera setup is going to look like right now. Let's see. I really just kind of wanted to um, focus. This is a much better picture of it now. You can see it much better now. I really just kind of wanted to focus. Um, I wanted it to be darker. So I did want the border to be darker, but I did not want to use this. I'm hoping I have enough left of this to eke out a binding, but I'm pretty sure I don't. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't. I did the calculation, and even if I cut a two-inch binding, it's, it's not going to make it, which is another reason why I'm just going to go ahead and make the video because it might take me a little while to bind this because um, I don't know what to use for the binding yet. Um, either I'm going to have to get a uncut fat quarter from my stash or um, that's really my only option. There's really not enough and I like a dark, I like something a little darker usually for my binding. So I'm not quite sure what my binding is going to be yet. I really wanted it to be this. I thought that would be perfect. And I can't source this material. I'm pretty sure I got this in, um, you know, Annie's has those monthly clubs. And they give you like, it'll be like, your first month, 90% off. And I think I did something like that. And I got some fat quarters. And a lot of these are from that pack that I got. And then some of these were from my personal stash. But I'm not sure which is which. So I, I can't get this anymore. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Um, but I got to figure something out. But I'm just over the moon how it came out. And I, I really just also really like how since I chose, since I put this fabric in the corner and then I used that for the border, I just kind of like the way that that kind of looks there on the, on, the four, on the four corners. But I just love how this came out. This was such a great pattern. It was so easy to do. Um, and again, I had to do more cutting because, you know, the pattern is written for a charm pack and I chose to use 10 fat quarters. So again, it took me a little bit longer because I had to figure out the math and figure out the cuts. And then, of course, then when I changed my mind about, um, you know, the four corners and, and how I wanted to do the corners, that took a, a little extra time. But Overall, um, I, I feel like this is definitely, well, this is definitely a, an in-a-day project. I didn't do mine in a day. Um, I think I pieced all of my squares yesterday. And then I put these two rows together. No, I pieced, I pinned them. So I pieced all my squares and I pinned these two rows together. I pinned these two rows together. Then today, I sewed all the rows, uh, decided on my border, cut the border, attached, and basted. So if I had another couple hours, I would definitely be able to get this um, quilted and bound um, in the next hour and a half and be done with it. But like I said, I got things to do, got places to go. But like, here's a closer look at the back. And I basically, like I said, I just took four of the fat quarters and just put them on the back. And I kind of like that it gives me a little bit of versatility. Um, now, to some degree, I am slightly regretting um, piecing the back. Because after I did it and basted it, I went up to look at my table and I was like, some matching placemats would have been nice. And I could have taken the remaining fat quarters and like including these three in the back and then I could have made like coordinating, I could have made some coordinating placemats. Um, but now 
they're not going to be the same. And I'm not taking this out. I'm not going to take this backing off and take the stitching out. I'm not doing it. So it is what it is for now. For now, it is what it is. But maybe I'll do that for a later project. It, maybe it'll be, it'll be an excuse for me to buy some extra fabric um, so I can make, uh, if I can get another fat quarter bundle that's like this kind of beachy um, sea glass or maybe random fat quarters. Maybe I might go to Joann's or something like that and buy a little bit of fabric. I haven't been buying very much fabric lately. I haven't really haven't been buying any fabric lately. Um, no. No, I haven't. I'm trying to think if I like, but no. I haven't been buying fabric. Um, so, so maybe that'll be an excuse to, to buy something or, or to look at something and, and figure something out and maybe do a different pattern. I have a book called Table Tastic by Doug Lico. It's got some great patterns in there. So maybe that'll be an excuse to grab that and um, make something out of there. You know, and just maybe make a bunch of blocks and make a table runner and, you know, four placements or something like that. I'm not sure. But I'm, I just love how this came out. Um, I did not have high expectations, not because of the pattern, it's just that I didn't know how the colors were going to go together or if I was going to like how everything kind of blended, um, especially like, like this one here. I wasn't sure about this one here. This was probably one of the prints that I wasn't sure about. And one of the reasons why I did this in the corners, I'm remembering my thought process now, was because of the color. It was just so much darker than everything else. Everything else is a bit kind of washed out, but um, this fabric here is just, it was just so much brighter um, than everything else here, and this one was as well. And so I was a little concerned that um, it would stand out too much in the quilt. And so that's why I relegated them to the corners to kind of prevent that from happening. And then I was worried about this fabric here, but because this is brighter and I think also putting this on the border helped to minimize this the brightness of, of this and made it stand out less um, my favorite print in this entire thing is this one right here probably because it's a little paisley ish and I have a huge uh, love of paisley it is it is I love paisley I've said this before, I love all of the old people prints. So I love Paisley, Houndstooth, there are more, but I can't think of them. I love that type of stuff. So um, this is my table runner. It's called the Strawberry Swirl Table Runner uh, because it was meant to go with the Strawberry Swirl fabric. However, you know, I did not use that. So maybe we can call it, I don't know beachy paradise or something or beachy swirl beach swirl I don't know I don't know but I love it um I won't get to work on it more today but I will definitely get this quilted I don't know maybe tomorrow I'll probably just go ahead and finish it up get it quilted tomorrow and go ahead and get it bound if I can find a binding maybe that's what I'll do today so to finish this up today I will find I will locate the fabric that I'm going to use for my binding, but I won't actually get to quilt or bind it until tomorrow. But um, I love how this thing came out. Another great pattern from Open Gate Quilts. And just to show that, like, even if you get a subscription box that has a kit, you can be more versatile than that. You can take that, you can take that and you can use you can use that pattern and use your own fabric or even choose your own layout like there are no rules here there's no rules there are no quilt police we get to do what we want like that is the best part about this hobby is that I get to do what I want and a lot of times what I want to do is follow somebody else right because that's part of the joy for me for some people the joy is the creativity of creating something and for me it's really not that for me the joy is in not thinking because I'm not really, I don't consider myself a creative, right? I don't really, I don't see patterns and like, ooh, let me, because I've seen some patterns and I'm like, I don't even know how you thought to do that. 
So that's not my gift. My gift is not coming up with unique patterns. That's clearly Monique's gift, but it's not mine. Uh, my gift <laughs> is, or I just like to be able to just make something, to see something and be like, okay, I can make that and maybe change some colors around or maybe change a layout or maybe change. But for the most part, I just, I'm, I'm totally okay with laying it out the way it's written. I am totally okay with following a pattern the way that it's written. A lot of people, you know, they call it rebel behavior. If you're familiar with, uh, familiar with Gudrun um, over at uh, Goodies, GE Quilt Designs, if you're familiar with her, she encourages rebel behavior. She encourages you to not follow the rules and to do what you want. And for me, I'm more of a rule follower. I've always been a rule follower. I'm a rule follower even in my quilting. Um, but I get to do what I want. The rules that I set are the rules for me. And so I like, so for me, I like symmetry. That's one of my rules. I like for things to be symmetric. I personally like for things to be um, as cl as close to right as possible, but they don't have to be perfect. Like I am I'm shocked and amazed about how well these points came together because I didn't try to make them come together. You know, there's a way that you can force your points to come together. I didn't do that. I literally just pinned and sewed. And the points are perfect, and I don't even know how that happened. I don't know how these points got so good, but the points look great. This thing looks great. Even though it's not finished, I'm tempted to just go put it on my table anyway because I just want to see it. I want to see it in its natural habitat. So I think that's what I am going to do. Anyway, that's it for me, and I'll see you guys next video.